Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar uh, entitled Pseudostatic Behavior of Rock Field Dams with a Dry Stone Pitching a Mixed Fem Dam Approach. I would like to thank you for being here today. I'm Veronica Royo from ITASCA France and our today's presenter is Mr. Ali Haydar. Ali is a junior researcher and civil engineer in ITASCA. He has started his PhD collaboration with Ecole Centrale de Lyon and Electricité de France. His current work focuses on the seismic behavior of rock field dams uh, with a dry stone riprap. As usual, uh, if you have questions during the presentations, please type them into the question box in your GoToWebinar control panel. Uh, it's on the right hand side of your screen. I'll bring them up at the end of the webinar. Ali, uh, are you ready to start? Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, I'm Ali Haider, as Veronique said. Uh, I'm a PhD student in Itasca Consultants, and I'm doing a CIFR uh, PhD project uh, in Itasca in collaboration with the Ecole Centrale de Lyon and Electricité de France, uh, which is the which is the one funding the project. So I will present to you today uh, the project, which is entitled Pseudostatic Behavior of Rockfield Dams with the Rise from Pitching, and it's done by MSPM FEM uh, modeling. Uh, and my uh, my supervisors are Fabian De Decker from Itasca and Eric Benson from Ecole Centrale. For the presentation outline, I will uh, it is divided in, the presentation is divided into three parts. I will talk first about the background or objective of the project. Uh, for the second part, uh, I will show you how the AFIAM DM approach was validated. And for the third part, uh, I will present to you the modeling of the full scale dam and uh, some of its uh, results. And at the end, I will uh, I will present a, a small conclusion. Starting with the project topic and with the background of the of the project. So the studied dams are rock fill dams, which are composed of a backfill with compacted decameter blocks, and they are protected with hand-plated stone. So we can see on those two figures, uh, on the left one, we can see how they were uh, built in the 1950s. We have a uh, dump rock fill in the middle of the dam, and the two phases of the dam were protected by hand-plated stones, as we can see here on the two sides. On the right figure, we can see the section of the, of the historical section of one of those dams. So we have the hand placed rock fill in the, or, or dump rock fill depends on the dam, uh, in the body of the dam, and we have the stone pitching on the two faces. So the thing is that ADF operates about 10 of such dams, uh, and the problem is that the mechanical behavior of such dam is not very well understood until now. Uh, for past modeling of such dams, uh, Remy de Results in 2004 modeled a full DM uh, model of uh, one of those dams on PFC2D Itasca software. Uh, and from this uh, modeling, he concluded that the stone pitching on the two sides of the dam plays a significant role for the dam stability. Uh, and then afterwards, in 2014, LDF funded a scaled down experiment within the research project Pedra where several downscale dams were uh, were tested experimentally. I will talk about that later in the presentation. Now for the objectives of the project. Uh, there are three main objectives uh, for this uh, three years of project. The first one is to validate a numerical approach for the modeling of red soil dams with dry stone pitching. Uh, the second, it is done by the modeling of federal experiments that, will, uh, that I will talk about later. Uh, the second main one is to study the influence of the dry stone pitching and its works on the seismic resistance of rock down. And the third last one is to understand what phenomena can induce the pathologies observed on site and what is the reduction of safety factor. Now for the second part of the presentation, which is the validation of the FEMDM approach. First, I will I will describe uh, briefly the the, the experiments that were done in the Pedra, Pedra campaign. So they are one over 10 scaled uh, down physical model, which were built inside a, a bucket. 
and the height of the dam is about two meters. So we can see this uh, an example of those physical models on the right. We have the physical model here and the stone pitching uh, laid on its faces and it's built inside a bucket. And we have steel plates on the two sides for the demand the friction and steel rods to fix the first row of the blocks. So the loading of this dam was provided by rotation of this uh, bucket. We can see the diagram here illustrating the rotation process. So the bucket was raised from one side and then it's, ro it's rotated to increase the horizontal forces acting on the dam. So it's a pseudo-static test. Uh, and the rotation was gradually imposed with an increment of one degree. Now for the modeling of those experiments. So we modeled those experiments in order to validate the AFIAM-DIAM approach uh, that we are interested in. So we used PFC3D and FACT3D tasks. So first uh, to model uh, these dams. So the first the dam body was modeled as a continuum medium using FACT3D. And the stone pitching on the two sides were modeled using discrete element method on PFC 3D. And then the two softwares were coupled to, to simulate the whole dam. Uh, and for the modeling of the, of the dam body, we used uh, two constitutive models, which are the typical Markulum model and the Alka and Roche constitutive model, which, uh, which is an elastic plastic, elastic plastic model developed by EDF for the purpose of modeling of rock fill in specific, specifically. For the results of this numerical model and comparing them with the experimental ones, starting with the failure angles, uh, in the experiments we, we had four cases, so the four cases were, were modeled. Uh, we can see that the, our numerical model was able to predict the failure angles very precisely using both Mohr Coulomb and Alkan Roche. Uh, the difference between the two constitutive models used lies in the displacement field. So if we go to the right figures, we have the displacements as a function of the rotation angle in the upper part of the downstream pitching and in the middle part of the downstream pitching. Uh, the experiments are the blue crosses and the yellow one is Alcan Roche and the gray one is more prolonged. We can see that Alcan Roche was able to retrieve very similar displacement progression as a function of the rotation angle. Whereas more Coulomb underestimated the space, the were uh, underestimated the displacement due to its set behavior. So at the end of this part of the project, uh, the validation of the AFIAM-DIAM approach was successfully done by the modeling of federal experiments and obtaining similar results. So that was the second part. Now going into the third and the main part of this presentation, which is the modeling of the of a full-scale dam given by EDF. For the description of the model dam, uh, we have a rockfield dam with, stone, with a dry stone pitching, which was built in between 1951 and 1953. It has a, it has a height of... Uh, it has a height of 16 meters on the downstream side and 18 meters on the, 16 meters on the upstream side and 18 meters on the downstream side. For the downstream slope, it's uh, one over one, and for the upstream slope, it uh, it varies from one over one at the bottom at the bottom part of the upstream pitching to 0.8 over one to the topper part. Uh, and we have on the downstream pitching, we have a berm with a width of 1.2 meters at the mid height of the dam. And the crest is uh, two meters in width. So this is the historical section of the study dam. In addition, we have uh, a photo of the blocks, uh, which represent the dry stone pitching on the two faces, which from which we extrapolated the dimensions of the blocks. And we here we have here the front view. Uh, and we should note also that uh, from in the section of the dam, we should note that the first the first part of the stone pitching is the hand placed dry stones that we see here. And under them, we have handy placed rock fill, which uh, was handy placed in order to to make a straight face uh, for the for the layage of the dry stones. Uh, what we observe on site uh, of this dam uh, is some pathologies, which are uh, which will which are studied in this project. The first one, as you can see here on the left figures, is a uh, is a buckling of some of the of the of some of the blocks in the downstream pitching, especially on the bottom uh, on the bottom part, uh, and it's mainly around this uh, chamber here. 
So we have possible effect of this uh, small rigid structure in the center of the downstream pitching gear. Uh, in, uh, in addition, we have longitudinal cracks and movements under the berm at the mid height of the downstream. For the numerical model built to, to, to model this dam, first, first a model was built with just the first layer, with just the first layer of the stone pitching without the hand placed uh, blocks uh, under the pitching that I talked about earlier. Uh, it, so, and the slopes of the downstream and upstream faces are one over one, and we, we modeled the reservoir and the crest. The model width is about 9 meters, and the number of blocks in the horizontal direction is 22, and the number of zones in total number of zones is about 120,000, and the number of blocks modeled by PFC to model the dry stone pitching is about 5,600 blocks. And for now, we have a homogeneous rocky foundation, which is modeled by Morpholon, Mor and the body of the dam is modeled using Alka and Rush. So the, the approach used to model this dam is the FEM DM approach validated in the previous study that I talked about earlier. And for the block dimensions used to model the dry stone pitching, it's 30 by 20 by 40 centimeters. Uh, now a second model, uh, numerical model was built, but this now by considering the hand placed blocks layers under the pitching. It was modeled uh, as a continuing medium also, and but uh, using more prolonged. So for this second model, we have the rock fill using Alcan Rose, the hand placed uh, areas under the pitching using more column, which is 20 centimeters of thickness on the upstream side and 90 centimeters of thickness on the downstream side. And we have the dry stone pitching model by PFC on the both sides, and they have a thickness, they have a thickness of 30 centimeters. For the simulations uh, carried out on this numerical model, first, uh, the dam was constructed in four stages to simulate the real uh, case uh, construction case. And after construction at Tainic equilibrium, the reservoir is filled and the uh, water pressure is applied on the dam to study the displacement. For some of the results of our full scale dam modeling, uh, we, we, we did some steps in order to, to simulate the final model. So we started with a simplified model uh, where we have no berm on the downstream side and we don't have the hand placed uh, zones under the pitching. So after construction, we had a crest, uh, we had a crest displacement of 23 centimeters. Afterwards, we added the risk berm to study its effect and compare it with the case without the risk berm. Uh, we have the berm here on the downstream side, so we can see that it has a high effect on the displacement behavior of the dam. The displacement at the crest increased to 36 centimeters, and we can see so, uh, the displacement of the zones are toward the risk berm area. So the berm here represents a, a weak area of the dam. And the final model, which is the model with the berm on the downstream side, in addition to the hand placed zones under the pitching. Uh, the displacement decreased again from 36 centimeters to 24 centimeters. So we can conclude from this result that the berm induces more displacement in the upper part after construction if we compare it to the case without the berm. And then when we add the hand placed zones under the pitching, it plays a role in reducing the displacements induced by the berm. The same comparison is done here, but this time uh, is for the shear strain after construction. So as before, we started with the case where we have no berm and no hand placed zones under uh, under the pitching. Uh, we compare it with the case where we have the berm on the downstream mid height. We can see that the berm represents a weak point where we have shear surfaces emerging to the downstream side, especially at the berm area. But when we add the hand placed zones under the pitching, we can see that those shear surfaces were eliminated and the dam is, is uh, the final model of the dam is stable. So as a conclusion of this the, of this comparison, we can see that the berm has a high effect on the dam's uh, on the dam's stability, and the hand placed zones stabilizes the dam after construction. Now for the displacements after the reservoir water filling. 
So we applied the, the we we filled the reservoir. It was done by apl applying uh, applying forces on the upstream pitching here at each block depending on its elevation. So we have two figures here. On the left we have the horizontal displacement of the dam after water filling, and on the right we have the vertical displacement of the dam after water filling. Uh, we compared them with uh, with the expected with the expected uh, values that we, we, we that we that we expect to have for this kind of dam. So by extrapolation of the theory established on works of this type, we should expect during the first impoundment a settlement of 0.7 percent of the height of the dam, which is about 12 centimeters, and a downstream displacement of 0.35 percent of the height of the dam, which is six, six centimeters. Here I'm talking at the at the crest at the crest region. So we have already similar displacement. So we have nine and the expected is twelve, and we have four and the expected is six. So we have similar uh, displacements to the expected ones. So the dam for now, so the numerical model is, is now somehow validated. But we are not finished here. Afterwards, uh, I tried to model the different parts of the foundation to see if we can get a better validation of the dam and if it plays a role in the displacement behavior of the dam. So I modeled the different parts of the uh, of the foundation, as you can see here. Before it was all the rocky. Now we have uh, we have a moraine under the dam, and we have upstream alluvium on the upstream foundation, and we have the concrete barrier. So the displacement result after water filling, but this time was non-homogeneous foundation, are shown here as before. We have the horizontal on the displacement on the left and the vertical displacement on the right. We can see that uh, af after adding the non-homogeneity of the foundation, we have closer results to the expected one. We have 11.5 centimeters at the crest and the expected one is 12. And we have 6.5 centimeters downstream horizontal displacement at the crest and the expected one is six. So we have better displacement prediction with the use of non-homogeneous foundation and the numerical model is validated based on that. Uh, afterwards, so we tried to model the downstream rigid structure that I talked about earlier. Uh, specifically, I mean this structure here on the downstream bottom part of the dam. Uh, where we have the buckling areas around it. So this one was the effect of this uh, structure was taken into account by fixing some of the blocks uh, in the middle part of uh, the bottom downstream pitching. It's 1.6 meters in width and 2.5 meters in height. Uh, and in this case, we used trapezoidal blocks instead of parallelepiped blocks to, to have more flexibility in the rotational uh, motion of the blocks. So if we compare the two the case of uh, the initial case with no rigid structure on the on in this region and the case with the rigid structure here where the blocks were fixed, uh, we can see that uh, we have higher displacements and loss of contacts was observed above the rigid structure, uh, above the rigid structure and the, on the two sides of it, as we can see here in this area where we have concentration of displacement. If we compare it with the surrounding region, and this region is very close to the region where we have the buckling and the on site. So the justification of the buckling observed on site was was was, was done here. So coming now for the conclusions. Uh, the AFI and DM numerical approach was validated by the modeling of Pedra experiments, as we have said, as we have seen in the first part. Uh, and after that, after validating this method, it was used to model a real scale dam to study its behavior. Uh, we have seen a high effect of the berm on the dam behavior and stability, in addition to stabilizing effect of the dam by the hand placed layer under the pitching. And this uh, this real scale uh, real scale model of the dam was validated by obtaining close displacement to the expected ones after water filling, and at the end the buckling observed on site was justified. For the next step, which is the uh, which is the uh, which will be the work of the third year of the project, it will be the dynamic modeling of the 
done by applying an earthquake uh, motion at the base of the foundation. So thank you for your attention.